What are you doing now? Just checking your roundhouse and we'll fit. Yeah. And this one. I'm just taking out all of the screws from here so you can repair it. Why is this one not coming out with? Because I did it wrong. Now I've got a major job on my hands. I was just looking for Magnus and I just found him. Uh. That's looking a lot cleaner. Yeah. You having fun down there? Oh, I'm just getting rid of stuff, yeah. So oh, a lot of this is going to go, isn't it? Oh, uh, yeah, a lot. We're just about to head down to Kelvin and Nikki's. Well, first of all, we're going to go and pick up a couple of pallets and get some tools and then head down to Nikki and Kelvin's because today's the day that Magnus is going to build, what is it, a jig. I'm going to start building the jig. Start building the jig for, for the new motor. I'm going to put the engine and the gearbox together and then build a jig. Then take it off the jig. Uh, this is my understanding anyway. And then put the new engine on the jig so we can work out where the engine mounts go. Or roughly that anyway. So that's what we're up to today. It's going to be a big day. See ya. Well, we're down at Nicky and Kelvin's. So let's go and see how the boys are getting on. How's it going? Good. To one side of the jig, mate. Cool. Well, I couldn't get out here because it started pouring. Was it raining? More than this, yeah. Oh, it didn't rain here. Didn't feel a drop. <laughs> I think this took us halfway around the world, this engine went. I know. I'm a bit sad. It's like Meccano. Like woodworking, you mean? Yep. What are you doing now? Just checking your bell house and we'll fit. Yeah. And this one. That's a fair bit wider. Oh, hang on, that's it. No, that that point. Um, Move you back here. That's 360, so that's about the same. You gotta have a rattle gun in the boat. Yeah. It's a must. Oh, I've got a, I haven't got a heavy duty one. That's only a light duty. Yeah, I've got one. Yeah. Nice spot for them. Nah. Bigger. Let's push that over. It's like a bloody bunning shopping trolley. It doesn't go very well. Ah. <laughs> uh, You'd have to move this block back somehow. And we've got to take this bell out of here. Oh, that's right. We're ahead of ourselves here, mate. mate. You're just getting too excited. We're bloody ahead of ourselves. Yes. Yeah, I need to be able to hold this. I might get a uh, something wedge in there. This will work. Wait. Um, try that. It is tight, eh? Well, I can't see where that... Oh, it doesn't appear to have been leaking, mate. No, dry, bone dry. Where's all this oil been going, babe? 
Oui. Oui. Down a bit? Yep. Oh, mate, about a quarter of an inch. Oh, jeez. Come on, man. Up a tiny bit, bro. A bit more. No, no that's that blind. You think? Yeah. Otherwise, it would have gone in. What's going on? Are you going to pimp peanut a bit more? You want to make it look undaggy? Peanut's going to have some work done. I'm going to lift the collar at the back and install electronics. Taking out the old transducer, putting the new transducer in. I'll just pull the new cable through and then we'll coil it up under there again. What are you up to, Wen? I'm just taking out all of the screws from here so you can repair it. And I've taken these out. How can we taking them out? Because they're in the wrong place. Who put them there? Magnus did. And What's you get a there? point if you can tell us why they're in the wrong place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. why is this one not coming out with? Because I did it wrong. Now I've got a major job on my hands. So what exactly are you doing? I'm lifting the, um, these captain's collars up a bit higher so they don't sit in the water all the time. Right, do you give us a hint? Yeah. Wet and dry and then... Anti-fouler. What colour anti-fouler? Blue. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever they've got. Whatever, they? yeah. It's looking pretty empty down there, babe. It's a whole plan. Wow, you've taken a lot of stuff out. Yep. Very neat and tidy. Getting there. Is there much left? Uh, no. The idea is to have Virtually zero. Just a fuel filter here. Yep. External regulator for the alternator here. Yep. That's it. And you're changing that pipe, aren't you? That bit of plumbing there. These. No, the big fat oh, yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Just something a little bit yeah, smaller. Yeah, because this is a bit heavy weight for the whole plumbing system. So yeah. Put some lighter weight stuff in. So what's the newest addition to the uh, galley? This beautiful um, chopping board that Magnus just made. And what's special about it? Well, it fits in here. Mm. See? It's all routed out, is it? Yeah, look at that. So, so Wendy's always wanted the chopping board that um, fits in the galley. That gives me more space to chop on. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. We've still got to put our piece of timber in for the taps. Yeah. I'll cut the timber. I'm just going to cut the holes now and varnish it. We're getting there. What are you cooking, Wayne? I'm cooking a curry, chicken what's, curry. What sort of curry? Uh, just uh, Thai. Oh, Indian. Burmese. Indian curry. Indian curry. Yeah. And how many curries? Two. We're doing tandoori and we're doing uh, like a coconut cream sort of thing. Like Making a, up like a go tikka. Long. Like a tikka or like a korma or? Uh, yeah, like a tikka I suppose. Chicken tikka masala type. What's going on babe? We're in a mess again. Oh yeah. Just trying to find the leak. We've got a leak from outside somewhere. It's the chain plate, this chain plate. Um, and I'm just trying to find how it gets into the bilge so that I can fix anything and that's we haven't got it running through there yet look at the bilge it's not much left in there well, it's going to get a coat of paint pretty soon any luck with what finding where the water's coming no, from no it's dry everything's dry I have to wait till it rains this will be able to track it down now yeah so we've just got a vacuum cleaner here 
a little wet and dry one. $49. Yeah. What's going on, babe? Having a hose of a time. <laughs> Just pulling out the, um, the old hosing for the water maker. It was the only hose we could get in Mexico at the time, and it's not really suitable for um, the application. So, um, it, but it's all we could get. So at the time, it was suitable. What's that big hole, babe? Here. Mm. That's where this um, cabin cabin heater used to be. But the cabin heater only works from engine um, hot water. And when the engine's running, the cabin's warm anyway. Yeah. So, um, and it's 110 volts. So it's no, and we, last thing we ever need is a heater. So that way I can put a nice teak griddle on here, computer, two computer fans behind it, and suck the hot, hot air out of there constantly, pulling up cooler air out of the bilge into that area for both the water maker and the fridge. Sometimes it can get a little tricky with space when you're trying to sew in a boat where we're doing so many other boat projects. So I had to get my bit of timber out of there, which meant I had to move all of that. We've got all the food there that needs to go in there when we've sorted that out. We've got the cushions there. We've got stuff in the V-berth. I haven't got room to uh, put my board down, so I'm putting it in the galley. It's all very <laughs> squashed. And then I will start sewing over there. Oh. It's so nice when we've got all this away, but at the moment we haven't got anywhere to put everything, so uh, we're in a bit of a mess. We're in the point, the final throws of installing all the Victron. So we've got our charger inverter. We've got three solar regulators up there. We've got two new big ones for the big panels. They're going up here. And interconnecting cables. And then servo, um, servo GX. This is the brains of everything and we've got a smart shunt. I've got to put the smart shunt in. Um, smart shunt's going under where I'm sitting and the smart shunt indi goes into this and tells us how much current we're using in both directions. Then this is Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, everything else. It talks to everything, LAN, talks to the plotter. It talks to our onboard Wi-Fi system. Um, it talks to the fuel tanks, water tanks, uh, bilge pumps, um, alarms. It talks to pretty well everything and sends all that data into a central hub for um, our info which is on your phone on your iPad on your laptop um, wherever you want it in the cloud um, this is the servo yeah so it's all going together today you mentioned solar panels yeah we've just bought three new solar panels, a big 400 watt for the back uh, and two 120 watts for the sides, adjustable for the sun, because um, I put the solid top rail on, as you saw in a few episodes ago. Uh, and then we've got our existing 320 on the roof and 200 on the deck. So that'll give us five panels, which should be enough solar to run everything we need without ever starting the engine again, apart from propulsion. So our boat's turning blue? It's Victroned. <laughs> Where I'm working at the moment, uh, we're a Victron dealer, so I get really good, really good discounting thanks to uh, the guys at Nautical Supplies um, on Victron stuff, and um, that's enabled me to, to get all this.
So anyway, back into it. There's the two 30 ampers. I think I might fit Serbo just here. It's gonna have a lot of cables in and out of it. I don't know, I might put it in the cupboard to hide it all. Yeah, so that's where we're at at the moment. And while Magnus is installing all the Victron stuff, I am repurposing the old uh, sail bags or sail covers, I think they were, from Nutshell that we got when we bought her in Panama. I'm trying to use up this umbrella because it's such good fabric. Um, so I'm just going to make some covers for the, what are they called? Fenders. Yeah. So I've just got to unpick the seams and then just sew it, basically sew it back up into fabric again and uh, see what I can make out of it. Are we in a mess? Yes, everything is just everywhere because our storage cabin has been emptied out to do electrical work. Oh. We can't find the drill. Yeah, everywhere's a mess. I've just finished making one of the covers for the fenders. So I'm about to tidy up. Or try to. <laughs> How's it going in there? Good. You winning? Yeah, 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 winning. Slowly but surely. Is that the end of the day? No, 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 no. Just putting everything back in there so I can close the lid. Okay. Oh, a long way to go yet. So that's the way the engine was configured, the distances. The bottom of the sump was 5 mil off, the flywheel was 257 off, and the engine mounts are 222 off the um, bilge floor line. Then I'm going to jot down the numbers for the new engine, existing, to see what I have to modify. I was just looking for Magnus, and I just found him. Uh. He's actually in, in the engine bay. What are you doing in there, babe? Well, I've got all the drawings for the Volvo engine and gearbox, including the, um, including the engine mount positions. So I've just worked out the distance from the back of the flange of the gearbox to the uh, uh, rear mounting is 223. So, the old, I want to try and, because I want to try and make it as simple as I can. And if I position the um, engine where it wants to go, it's going to be really close to the back of this. So I'm going to have to bring it forward and put a little space in between on the end of the shaft. And I've also got this hole here that I don't really want to fill in and the mounts are a lot closer together, only 446 apart um, on the new engine compared to nearly 800 on the old engine. So I'm just trying to work out if I can use, if I can build this surface up here, tidy it up, build it up to put an engine mount on, because um, I'm going to fix all this up. Uh, if I can put an engine mount here and engine mount about here, I'll have clearance to this. I'll only have a small distance be between the back of the gearbox and the existing flange. So, update on the gearbox? The old velvet drive, I've decided to... Number one, we were going to have to make an adapter plate to the new engine. Then we were going to have to make a all different engine mounts and because that gearbox is so heavy and extends so far back the transmission uh, it needs its own mounting so that means three six engine mounting six mountings and it's really hard to line things up with six mountings um, different splines different drive everything was going to be a little bit as your father a bit Heath Robinson so um, I've decided to bite the bullet and sell that gearbox um, and some other bits and pieces and then that'll give us enough money to buy a new Volvo gearbox. So we've ordered the new Volvo gearbox which is on its way and that's going to bolt straight onto the motor. It's going to be 100% vanilla, no mix match. Um, 
and it's going to give us peace of mind and security for when we really need it, where we're heading. Um, so that's what we're doing. That's why I've got all new measurements because the gearbox, the Volvo gearbox is a lot shorter than the Velvet Drive gearbox. Um, so I'm just repositioning engine mounts now. But I want to have all the engine mounting ready so that when the crane drops the, mo the engine in, um, it's just going to sit straight on the engine mounts without having to take the engine out again, gin around, and yeah, I want to have it as ready as I can have it. So that's what I'm doing in my little hidey hole.